Kilda. This video is all about indigenous gardening systems. And there's now a global shift towards environmentally sustainable gardening and farming practices such as permaculture, regenerative agriculture, syntropic agroforestry and so on, which is which is awesome, but there seems to be a basic misunderstanding around the actual origins of a lot of the of, of these organic farming approaches. So a lot of people assume that these systems are modern intellectual inventions thought up by the founders of these movements, but the only new thing about these approaches are actually the academic sounding labels that have attached to them. Indigenous cultures all over the world have actually been using these systems and these approaches for thousands of years. Um, and if you even want to go back into European Mesolithic history, that sort of thing, you can also see these approaches uh, being used there by those ancient societies. Back in the day before colonial cash crop plantations and industrial monocrop, monoculture farming took over, indigenous cultures all over the world practiced a wide variety of mixed crop, biodiverse kind of agroforestry systems using uh, different kind of food crops and variety of support species you know, growing in multiple what you could call zones or strata and you can also still see remnants of these systems being um, practiced in local home and community gardens of indigenous um, cultures especially in the, in the tropics and subtropical regions um, in the Americas, in Southeast Asia, Africa, in the Pacific. Um, one of the, I guess, distinguishing features of indigenous land and resource management systems are that they are essentially holistic frameworks built on usually principles and, and values of ecological sustainability rather than profit and subsistence systems you know, driven by these kinds of values usually fall under the definition and field of agroecology in the scientific community which again is you know, just another new word for an old concept um, but if you want to study that thing you can you know have a look under the field of agroecology uh, just to give you an example of of one of those frameworks. Here in the Pacific, Polynesian subsistence systems were traditionally based around a concept which we refer to here in Aotearoa as Kiuta Kitai, which literally means from the inland mountains to the sea. And this concept embodies our, our traditional system of sustainable resource management and it was built around the most vital element in the ecosystem, which was water and natural waterways. As the rain falls and then just flows over the land and out to sea. And the system was implemented and it was adapted um, all throughout Polynesia, um, applying mixed crop agroforestry and regenerative food cultivation and harvesting practices. Tribal lands were usually divided according to this kind of a kiuta kitai system, um, utilizing a range of different natural habitats or zones in the system. Um, the highland or inland areas usually were, usually the forests were, they were sourced mainly for construction materials, for trapping birds, for, or harvesting medicinal plants. In, and in another area, the lowland areas, kind of adjacent to streams and rivers and wetlands, were, were used more for a mix of open and forest gardens, um, as well as you know, using the streams for, for food. And the coastal zones were used more for a mix of habitation, for agroforestry and harvesting, particularly seafood. 
Um, in Hawaii, these these kind of land use models were called ahupua'a, and here in the in Aotearoa, the concept was more kind of broadly referred to as ahufenua. That's the kind of the word which we used um, in general. And tribal areas were divided into kind of what we call takiwa or um, wedge-shaped kind of con configurations, um, which kind of followed the natural landscape, with freshwater streams and river rivers acting as the central veins in the system, uh, or the arteries, and then the mountain ranges or, or ridges forming like tribal or sub-tribal boundaries. And this system was kind of applied as a core model, as a, like a blueprint throughout throughout the Pacific. Um, another common characteristic is that they, they were driven by ancestral, astronomical and environmental knowledge and, and values. And here one of the most important principles is reflected in many of our sayings. Um, just to give you one of them, uh, one, we've got one that goes he oranga tai au, he oranga tangata, which, which basically means the, the health and well-being of people is intimately tied to the well-being of the environment. Our whole livelihood and survival is dependent on, on the health of our natural environment. So it sort of gives you an idea of where the priority of and our understanding around agriculture was. Uh, unfortunately with colonization this, this whole system was replaced by monocrop cash crop plantations or intensive agriculture and as our, our traditional models were kind of labeled as primitive or they were called backwards and or inferior and didn't, having no value to the colonial economy and progress in general so the only living examples left in the Pacific are much smaller in scale, um, usually in the local home gardens or in the more remote locations. Polynesian systems utilize a whole range of strategies, um, and I'll get into a few of these in, in other videos. Um, just to give you some examples, um, collective farming, Collective seed storage, intercropping, cover cropping, crop rotation, shifting cultivation, uh, rain fed irrigation was an important one, flood cropping, um, using canals and water harvesting, like um, terracing, using kind of like swales and basins, which were particularly important for like, managing soil runoff. Um, other strategies included things like pocket agriculture, lithic mulching, soil mulching, composting and amending the soil with charcoal, ash, food waste, vegetation. Um, they also had controlled fires, cultural burning and a range of different microclimate strategies which kind of utilise the slope aspect, shelter, that sort of thing. And of course they didn't use any fossil fuel powered machinery or tools or any, you know, no chemicals, no pesticides, fertilizers, herbicides, that sort of thing. And um, so Polynesians, you know, we weren't the only ones using these different approaches. As I said, indigenous cultures all over the world have been using them for ages. Um, and they have their own names for them. Um, Central America, I know there's a few there, that what, they call, what were they called, the Milpa system, Chamugro, Chakra, those sort of in Central America, uh, what else do they have, the um, Chinampas is another one, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm saying these, pronouncing them correctly, but um, and you know they had all sorts of, all sorts of systems, different names for them. So before you go out and spend a heap of money on one of those flash sounding courses or <laughs> regenerative 
agriculture, polyculture, food forest systems and whatever. Um, do a bit of, you know, it helps to do a bit of research on the roots of a lot of these approaches. Um, we have a look at how indigenous agroforestry and gardening systems worked and you know, learn from the peoples that were practicing those approaches you know, for thousands of years. Ah, uh, kia ora, that's it. Mauri ora.